What is up everybody, Coach Juma here, and today we're gonna to be going through a full upper body push day workout with Ish Taher. Ish came to me a couple weeks ago with struggles getting his physique in shape because he has a lot of shoulder pain and it stops him from hitting his chest muscles, hitting his shoulder muscles, basically doing any kind of upper body workout. His body freezes up, doesn't do the things it wants to, and his muscles aren't challenged. He needed help breaking through that, relearning how to move properly and safely, and improving his physique. So we're gonna show you what we're going to be doing to strengthen his shoulder joint, improve stability and mobility, and still challenge the muscles that he struggled to hit for so long. Your turn. Uh, <laughs> I wanna hear your perspective actually about your shoulder issue and what you went through the past couple months and then over the past couple weeks too. Yeah, so initially I guess before I was never really working out the right muscles in the shoulder or just concentrating on one muscle more than the other. I ended up hurting myself to the point where I couldn't any real lifts or lift as heavy as I wanted to rather. Mm -hmm. I was stuck at very low weights and naturally if something was lightweight and it was the wrong motion, I would just be in pain and my mind would tell me to stop right away. Even some motions without any weight, I would just go to go do them and naturally my head's telling me don't do that and I would stop myself. Mm -hmm. But with Coach JJ over here, you know, we're over here working the muscles <laughs> that we need to work in order to fix this problem and it's been going good so far. We're gonna walk through start to finish what we're gonna be doing today and how it's helped him. That's pretty much it. So let's get to the workout. Let's do it. We're just gonna be doing the wraparounds, okay. 10 of those, then 10 pull-aparts, and then 10 overhead pull-aparts. So this is really just to improve mobility of the shoulder before we get moving. We're gonna be starting off with a floor bench press. A lot of shoulder flexion is needed. Part of the thing that we need to reduce pain in the shoulder is improving mobility of the shoulder. So that's what we start every workout with. And now go into pull-aparts. So mobility is one thing, stability is the other thing. And the stabilizing muscles, keep your elbows straight. The stabilizing muscles of the shoulder are all across the upper back. So when we get started with any kind of upper body workout, we're gonna improve mobility, and then we're gonna improve stability by targeting the upper back muscles before any kind of heavy lifting. All right, and then, yep. Let the band lie on your shoulder. So when you bring it down, yeah, there you go, and back up. Now, plyo push-ups, if you remember those. Calluses, there you go. Oh, the nail stuff. <laughs> Squeezing so hard. As high as you can. One more each. Straight arms, there you go. Good, good, good. Should be burning. <laughs> The goal here with the plyo push-ups is an explosive movement. We always want to prime our central nervous system because to lift heavier weights, we need our central nervous system involved to really push the weight. You know what's crazy? I feel different muscles now when I go like this. Oh yeah? You know what I mean? Like I feel it more here. Like you feel it stretching and on both sides? Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. It's good, right? That's a really good thing. I feel like Cause, yeah, because yeah, now it's not just your shoulder moving, you're using your muscles to move your arm, right, 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 you know? Right, right, right. So it's actually working as it should. <laughs> I don't think I've seen it. <laughs> Little Aravia too. Our metric based movement of the day is gonna be the floor bench press. And we're gonna be really focused on tempo here. So pick up the weight, grab it at a good width, good. And control it on the way down till your elbows touch the floor. The reason we're going with a floor bench press as opposed to a regular bench press, in relearning and improving shoulder strength and stability, we wanna limit the range of motion and get good at a portion of it before we go through the fuller range of motion. So here we're focusing on stabilizing with squeezing our shoulder blades and keeping them depressed. We're working on tempo to make sure our elbows are in the right position the entire time. And the slower movement is gonna help our brain default to these patterns when we're in this position under heavier load. So that when he does a normal bench press, when he does a floor bench press with heavier weight, he's not compensating or adjusting the way his body used to when it was in pain. All right, get yourself up. We'll do another warm up set. But I feel like my back's heavier. Isn't that weird? Your back is? Heavier. Heavier, like thicker? Yeah, like that. That's nice. I feel like I'm walking around like that. Hell is. Like <laughs> but I feel like I'm like 
Hey, that's good. That means you're feeling muscles, I like am. they're pumped and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, hell yeah. Pause, good. Good. Now the pausing is strategic in the re-strengthening process. Again, we want to rewire the brain and, and its movement patterns. We want to rewire the default movement patterns that it goes through. And moving through it slowly and with control and making sure that the joints are in the right position, he's focusing the way that he should, will in the future make it the default movement pattern for himself so that he doesn't have to think about it later on when he's under heavier load. He can just focus on pushing the weight the way you want to. Good. One more, one more. We're gonna get into our working set. Two warm up sets. I ain't gonna lie. You be kicking my ass, bro. I'm feeling them. Really? He seems like a nice guy. Nah, bro. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, he got me getting better. I'm That's just the not. best part, bro. But it's just the, the muscle fatigue I feel because I haven't worked out some of these muscles in so long, bro. It's insane, bro. It hurts so much sometimes. <laughs> so here we're gonna be doing I and T raises from a prone position before we get into our heavy sets. And we're gonna super, super set this with all of them. So all he's gonna do is raise it as high as he can and bring it back down. He wants to try to use only his shoulders the entire time. He's not extending his spine. He's not bringing his head up. We wanna, again, really focus on opening up the shoulders and improving the range of motion, as well as strengthening these upper back muscles, which is exactly what this is doing in the eye raise position. So he's gonna do one more of the eyes and then he's gonna go into T's. So straight out, good, nice. You'll see it's not a huge movement, but he'll tell you it's very challenging. It is. <laughs> it's not about the range, it's about the control and making sure that we are activating those upper back muscles and do one more of these, and then we'll get back to the bench press. Good. There you go, there you go. One more. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, it's sorry. It's okay. <laughs> That's what you could do? <laughs> oh, we're good. We're good? We're good. All right. Next set, we're aiming for five, though. All right. How many we do? Four. <laughs> good. You good? Good. Doing it this time, compared to when we did regular bench two, three weeks ago, how does it feel? Chest muscles, how does it feel? Shoulders? Like, what's the difference? Like, only here, though. like when I used to bench. On both sides or just the um, painful both. shoulder? I, I was on, on this side more so. More so, okay. But I always used to feel it more like in the, like this area, yeah. than in the chest. But like the tip that you give me, like squeezing the bar and shit, I really just feel it in my chest. And a little bit like back here. Nice. Yeah. Good. So I feel like I'm really- Hell yeah. Okay. You're getting there. Nice. All right. <laughs> Good. Nice. Fuck. You work out other muscles? It makes you feel. Yeah. <laughs> Takes the blood away from this muscle. <laughs> It's a distraction. <laughs> but between that and the running man, you know, chest will be fine. <laughs> We're gonna do the scrape the bar again. We're gonna superset that with face bowl presses. That'll be a new one. And then we're gonna do shoulder isolation, see how your shoulder holds up, and body weight, chest and tricep workouts afterwards. I did face bowls yesterday though. The more we do them for you, it'll be better. Okay. Yeah, anytime shoulders are an issue or chest is too strong we double down on face pulls look at that vein popping up because i'm spicy like this <laughs> i don't know what <laughs> so try to relax the rest of your body just bring it up with your shoulders even if it's not as high good when fatigue sets in you want to compensate with other muscles in this case, he's stiffening up his lower back and his lower core to bring it up. But just go with whatever you can handle once fatigue sets in. Once you compensate, that's when you start getting into injury territory. Of course, a little compensation isn't bad, but we don't want to overdo it. With the T's or any kind of 
reverse fly or widening movement that you're pulling apart like this, you want to find that pinching sensation in your mid back. So right now he's actively pinching my fingers, holding it for a couple seconds and bringing it back down. That means you're using your shoulder blades and stabilizing because that's what we want when we do the floor bench press. At the bottom of the movement, or throughout the entire movement actually, you're going to be keeping your shoulder blades together and squeezed to keep your shoulders in a safe position. All right, last set. Good. Nice. Hell yeah. Okay. Couple like weeks, that. good intentional work, yeah. changes everything. <laughs> was, that an, was that an uncle touch or were you just? No, I was just stretching <laughs> He's gonna be keeping contact with the rack the entire time as he presses overhead. So he's pushing forward while coming overhead. Good, we have natural stopping points for us in both directions, so we're not going overboard. Good, keep pushing forward actively, flex your core, keep that straight. With overhead movements, it's always common to overextend your core. You wanna make sure that it's always braced because that compensation under load can lead to a lot of low back pain in the future. But the reason we're going with the scrape the rack press versus a regular overhead press, having this extra support demands less from the shoulder. So we can still go through the overhead motion. We can still challenge the shoulder muscles and take it through a full range of motion without demanding as much out of it because it doesn't need to stabilize. It has the right to stabilize itself. All right, and then face pull press. Same idea here. We're trying to improve stability and strengthen the posterior muscles on the back of the upper, or on your upper back, on the back side of the shoulder. Right now, the band is trying to pull him forward. He has to use his upper back muscles to keep it in place as he presses overhead as much as he can. First day, we tried to do a push day together. This banded overhead press is something we actually tried. It was giving him way too much pain. Like he couldn't even do two. Two to three weeks later, and no pain. You know, it's funny. The first time yeah. I did it, my mind was telling me, like, naturally stop it. But then I just went through it, and I felt fine. Yeah. yeah. A lot of it's mental, bro. A lot of the shit I used to do, I mentally would just stop myself because I got used to the pain. But you know, you know it's about to hurt. Exactly. One thing that helped a lot, though, that we've been doing, slowing down the tempo. Yeah, With yeah. a lot of your exercises, you move. You used to move pretty fast. Yeah. Now you, like, got the control down. Yeah. That slowing down changes the difference. Because now you can yeah. stop your mind before it tells you to stop. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Uh. I'm giving you good camera shit right now, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> For push workouts, I always like to start with the horizontal most days and then switch to a vertical movement afterwards. Just because the chest muscle is bigger. If you start with the overhead press, your shoulder is gonna already be a little bit fatigued and used. So when you go into horizontal movement afterwards, your shoulder can take over really easily. But we still wanna work out the shoulders in a heavy way on push days too. So that's why we still do a barbell overhead lift following a barbell horizontal lift. The more you know. Aesthetics, aesthetics. So now once we've done the power movements, we go through a stretching movement. He's still not ready to do cable flies or chest flies yet, so we're doing deficit push-ups. And we're doing it on a little bit of an unstable surface so that he can improve the stability muscles in his shoulder too. So what he's doing here is challenging the range of motion that's comfortable for him, but isn't painful. He's gonna go until he feels a good stretch in his chest, but short of pain in his shoulders. And then once he reaches that bottom point, he's gonna pause before coming back up. The pause is really important because when, if you bounce from the bottom, you're gonna start using your tendons, your ligaments, all the really small muscles in your shoulder, as opposed to shifting and using your chest as the main driver of force to bring you back up. So he's gonna take this all the way to failure. Keep, nice. Raise it up, no problem. Five seconds going down. So five, four, three, two, one, really slow. Good, good. And, a, and try not to shrug, just arm. There you go, good. And he's grabbing onto the post for extra stability so that his core isn't being used. We're really only focusing on the shoulder. We start with the weaker side first so we know how many reps to match on the other side. Because if you start with the stronger side, you're gonna get tired and you won't be able to do as many on the weaker side later. And with lateral raises too, it's not directly to the side. See, so he's coming a little bit forward, not out here. 
that's going to keep tension again on this shoulder joint on the side. Okay, so important to listen to your body, important to get feedback here. We added weight, we went from a 10 pound dumbbell to a 12 and a half pound dumbbell for the second set and he felt pain again in his shoulder. The form wasn't really too bad, it wasn't compromised by any means, but because of that pain we're going to bring it back down a little bit. Even though he could do the form, we want to avoid pain while working out. It should really just be a muscle burn, not a pain. The only pain you should be pushing through is a burning pain, a lactic acid buildup pain. Pushing through an actual joint pain is going to do more harm than good for you. Pain got woken up, right? We're going to go back to stabilizing the shoulder and working on the upper back muscles. This is a good idea if you're doing a push workout and you start feeling pain. Go back to upper back work and a light intensity just to reinforce stabilizing muscles and reduce pressure in the pain afflicted area. Both of these sets really move slow. All right, really focus on control. Pain, burn? Fatigue. Fatigue, okay. When we can't go up and load, we create more resistance just by changing the tempo. So him resisting gravity is a constant tension on the shoulder muscle. Last thing here is gonna be a tricep isolation exercise. Triceps have already been hit, not directly, but indirectly in every exercise we've done. And we're gonna be doing just bent at the hips, tricep extensions. We wanna do something where it's full elbow flexion. We're not using the shoulder. We're done using the shoulder joint completely. We don't wanna do any kind of overhead tricep extension or anything like that. We're not fully ready for that yet, but getting into this position, going through full extension, and bringing it back down is all we're looking for. So you're gonna do 50 reps. 50? Yeah, five zero. We're gonna start heavy. This is like your eight rep max, maybe. You're gonna rep it out. Take as little of a break as you can, and then get back to it. Nice. Let's give you 20 seconds. You got 15 more. Three, two, one, good. Zero. All right, upper body day done. How do you feel? We already know kind of how you feel, but. Fatigue, man. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired, I'm just that tired. But pain? No pain, no, 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 no. The pain was, it was very little at, at certain workouts, but we adjusted to it. Outside of that, burn, burn in the muscles. That's Way it. different than what Way it would have been. Physical, yeah. Like I a month ago. feeling like physical pain when I would work out. Like, yeah. Like, ow, you know, it wasn't like this burning feeling where like the muscles are growing, it was just pain, that's it. Yeah. How was it after working out? Did you used to feel really beat up? And how is it compared yeah, to now? To, my, yeah, my, I used to just feel drained, like physically drained. But with these workouts, honestly, I feel, I feel fine the next day. Nice. You know what Thank I mean? You. Like there's that burn, obviously, and there's a little fatigue. For sure. But it's nothing compared to what it once was. Yeah, and that's what you want. You're not supposed to be in pain. You're not supposed to be super beat up after a workout. You should feel fatigue. You should feel a burn, and you, you could push through those pains. But any actual physical pain and aches and ailments, that's not what you want to experience. And that's when you know you need a smarter training program or some sort of structure to guide you away from that kind of pain and get the good energized pump feeling that Ish now has. Ish has been beta testing the new Stupid Fit Training Program app where you're gonna have a pocket personal trainer giving you workouts to follow in a simple, organized way. This is gonna be available in late November. So if you want to be on the waiting list, click the link in the description and you could get workouts like the one we did today or from a collection of other workouts that best fit you, your goals and your needs. All your workouts are laid out here in a nice organized way. Click on any exercise, you'll know exactly how many reps and what weight to do. You have written and video descriptions for each exercises live in the app. It's really simple, really fun, really easy to use. I'm excited to share it with you when it comes out. Make sure to join the waitlist to never miss out on it.